Well, since the cordless ratchet seems to work pretty good, I decided to install it on the bench. Well, today I guess would be construed as uh, a follow-up on a couple of things. Um, since the cordless uh, quarter-inch ratchet was working out so well, I decided to give it a permanent spot on the pegboard on the back of the bench, hung it up there. Uh, it's a real handy spot. It's really easy to access and ready to go. Keep it plugged in and charged up at all times. And as a second follow-up, in the last video we talked about that uh, Surefire ignition box. And today while I was searching around the interwebs, uh, just on a lark, I typed in Surefire ignition box. And I want to show you what the results were that I got. So, okay, so we did a Google search for Surefire ignition box. And our two first hits here are Vintage Surefire, which basically has nothing to do with the particular item in mind. The second hit is actually a eBay entry where uh, somebody was selling that particular item. But what I found to be ironic is the third in the Google list <laughs> was yours truly's video. Let's see if we tap on this second one here and I'll show you. There it is. It was somebody in California. A seller in California that had this item. We're awful bright. We're very bright. But as you can see, it's the same box that uh, we demonstrated in the last video. I just thought that was kind of funny. thought I would share. I share a lot of things on this channel that are mindless and useless for the most part. I wrote a piece on the blog uh, a couple of days ago while I was waiting uh, patiently to get my hair cut and waiting for a turn in the barber chair. I was sitting there and there was about three or four gentlemen waiting ahead of me. I go to an old style barber shop. It, less styling and just more cutting. So you go to the barber shop and that's where you get all the good gossip and all the juicy uh, wherefores and how to's and who's doing what and what new restaurants are coming to town and what the sheriff's into and why the county judge executive allowed that whatever it was to go on or not happen and I was in there the other day and <clears throat> like I said there was four or five of us sitting there and to a man everybody had a had one of these in their hand and they were all you know is it my turn yet it was kind of disturbing, actually. And as much as I like gadgets, and I mean, gee whiz, I'm sitting right here at uh, 2.30 in the morning making a YouTube video in my garage. Uh, so, you know, I'm I'm into the whole social media and gadgetry and whatnot, electronics. But the barbershop is the one place that a man ought to be able to go to and sit down and have a conversation with other, other people in town that, uh, I mean, we live in a fairly small town here, so... Um, <clears throat> Some of the people you know, you run across. I mean, you go to the same barber shop for years. You usually have the same clientele. But it's funny that everybody's sitting there with their their little media devices, and they were texting or surfing the internet or checking some app or playing a game. So since everybody else was preoccupied, I decided that I would uh, post a blog entry on on my uh, on the Kentucky Curmudgeon site, and. Uh, which was ironically about the fact that everybody has some electronic gadget these days. And uh, it, it elicited quite a few comments from some of my uh, readers, which created a pretty decent conversation. Honestly, I don't really have a whole lot of stuff here today. Um, one of the channels I subscribe to on uh, YouTube is a fellow by the name of Steve Ramsey. <clears throat> And he's out in California, and he's a woodworker uh, and a YouTuber. He makes a living making uh, um, projects and videotaping the making of those projects uh, to put up on YouTube. And he has about 250,000 subscribers, which is pretty impressive. I mean, that's a pretty good audience. <clears throat> and today on his uh, entry, he, 
he spoke about, uh, well, you know, if you want to succeed on YouTube, you have to put up some videos. Well, that's right up there with you. Can't strike out unless you go to bat. So even though the content today might be a little lame, we're just kind of making stuff up here. We're going to call this a follow-up video, I guess, since there's relatively very little new content. Have a five-second shot of, ooh, look, the cordless ratchet is hanging on the bench. And, ooh, look, the number three hit on Google is <laughs> this a video I made yesterday. Make uh, these videos as, as, uh, as riveting as possible. Riveting? Less double chin, maybe? Mm. Mm. I could have been a contender. I try to, to make a determined, educational, informative, serious video about how to remove the instrument cluster on a 2008 Ford Taurus X. Kind of like a station wagon on steroids. I'll uh, set the camera up and uh, show you exactly what it takes to remove the instrument cluster on a 2008 Ford Taurus X, which I'm sure it's the same on a regular 2008 Taurus. Uh, they pretty much have the same dash and whatever. Uh, probably the next project video that I make. Now, that's not to say that there won't be a, a series of completely useless videos between now and then, but the next project video I make will probably be getting into the dash of that of the car and replacing that bulb. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, give it a thumbs up. We thank you for watching and please tune in again. Mmm, man, that smells good.